boxing bro. As they go, Saint-Germain-des-Prés is actually a fairly small quarter for today. It only has one bridge. So if you get to the Pont des Arts here and the Académie Française, you've gone too far. However, you can see something interesting right there behind the Academy, which is where the quarter gets its name. Good morning and welcome back to the 80 and 8. It is week two of my attempt to go and make a video in every quarter in the entirety of Paris over the course of eight months. This week we're going to be doing five more if everything goes to plan. And today I'm crossing over into the 6th arrondissement of Paris, already colloquially often known as Saint-Germain-des-Prés, but today we're going to be in the quarter that is specifically, you know, and officially administratively named Saint-Germain-des-Prés, named after the famous Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, which we'll get to and we'll see. What is with the whistling? Today's borders are blessedly simple. To the north, we have Quai Malaquais, which is right on the Seine, of course. So the Seine is our northern border. To the east, Rue de Seine, just runs the whole length of it. To the west, Rue des saint pères runs the whole length of the west. The only mild complication, which isn't that bad, to the south is Rue du Sèvre, which turns into Rue du Four, which turns into Boulevard Saint-Germain. Now, despite the blessedly simple borders, it is a pretty crappy day as far as the weather is concerned. And I went for an eight mile run this morning. So I'm already pretty well worn in on the whole mileage thing this morning. But the main thing is I need lunch, like right away. So uh, here we are on Quai Malaké, which is our northern border, right up against the sun. I want to wander around just a little bit and see, like, I always wonder what this thing was. I know they do exhibitions. I don't really know the name of it. So I'm going to check that out. I guess we'll just walk up one of the boundaries and see if we can't find lunch and maybe wander around. We'll see. I'm, I'm probably going to just keep wandering until I, like, collapse from hunger, but, you know. This is how I roll, unfortunately. We also have Rue Bonaparte running straight down the middle that we could follow. But first I want to figure out what that thing is. You'll notice a lot of art stores and art galleries in this district. And a large part of that is not just because it's Paris, it's because the Academy des Beaux-Arts is just over here. We're going to walk by it. So it's like the, the Fine Arts Academy that a lot of my favorite artists, including Invader, went to at one point or another. And uh, yeah, maybe someday I'll go there too. Probably not. But I, you know, a boy can dream. What is this place? Beaux-Arts, oh this is Beaux-Arts, so this is like where they do their expositions. I don't know how I never knew that this was attached to the university. I'm not really sure if this sign is there for a specific project or if it's just trying to pump me up, but it's been there for a while. And you know, I feel kind of pumped up. I guess I'm kind of a poem. But just that quickly, I'm gonna be turning left onto Rue des Saint-Père, or Street of the Holy Fathers. You can see we're already in the seventh arrondissement if we cross the streets. This is our broad boundary. And if we go that way and stay on the left-hand side, we'll still be in the sixth arrondissement. I'm actually gonna walk uh, on the seventh side of the street so that you can see the sixth side of the street. That seems like the most uh, productive and sensible way to do this. But you can see, look at all these galleries. It's a really, really fun area to go. If you want to check out galleries, some a really wide mixture and array of art. We'll see some more when we come back down Bonaparte or uh, Rue de Seine as well. A lot of these are connected to the old bike routes that we used to do with Bike About Tours. Back when I was a fancy schmancy tour guide, Bonaparte and Rue de Seine were uh, definitely key elements of that, especially Rue de Seine. So it feels pretty familiar. Oh, I don't think I have that Space Invader. There's even just discarded art sitting around outside some of these things, which I'm not gonna say you're free to take because I don't know, but hey, who needs some fresh art? The other downside is that the only good coffee that I'm aware of in this area, off the top of my head at least, is on this side of the street, which means we will not be cheating and getting it. But I had coffee this morning, thankfully, so it's not like a desperate situation, but uh, lunch. We should probably start zigging and zagging into, I knew I was gonna do this. I'm gonna go all the way to the southern border, I think, and curve around, and then I'll zig and zag my way back north, and we'll see what we find. Hopefully something a little more engaging than a medical school. I mean, medical school is great and everything. Thanks for going, for those of you that are doctors that went. I just, you know. I wish it looked more like Hogwarts, basically. Here's a church that I've walked by a million times but never gone inside. It's really windy out here, too. Hopefully, uh, the phone is not picking that up too much. Let's go check this out and see what's going on. Voldemort has a... Oh, no. The Cathedral of St. Voldemir the Great. Again, ask for Hogwarts and we shall see.
Looks like maybe church is in session. That was nice. Figured it out. It's Ukrainian. It's cool. And I guess normally it's not open. So we were, uh, it's a good thing that I came on a Sunday because I've never seen it open before. But I don't know how often it's open, to be honest. Maybe it's open more often than I've just never managed to get in. But that was nice. Time to cross Boulevard Saint-Germain, probably the more famous street in the neighborhood, and uh, keep heading south until either I stumble into lunch or I uh, just give in and go for it. You can see, you can see things are pretty closed here today. It's really nice and quiet, which is delightful for walking around, just not for eating. <laughs> Once you get above Boulevard Saint-Germain as well, and then you start getting into this area, you've got a lot of shopping. Lots of fashionable stuff. There's a Prada store right there. There's a Terra Jarman. I don't know what a Terra Jarman is, but I'm sure it's pretty cool. Definitely a chic neighborhood and really quiet. One that I, I really enjoy just walking around over here. I said this before, I think I said this on the Starbon video, but this is one of those neighborhoods that like, there's something that's still very paris -y about it for me because I haven't explored it super extensively because you know, part of me is trying to retain some sense of the mystery of the city and that sense of exploration, which this entire series is going to kind of ruin for me to some degree, but it's just nice to come over here. And so it's funny because I actually preserve my outings to this side of the river for like pseudo special occasions. And I always like it. I always really, really like it. We've done it. We've done the Western border. We're going to turn left here and follow our, our mildly complicated Southern border. But the first street we're going to do it on, or the first name to the same street basically, is Rue de Sèvres. Now, Rue de Sèvres will carry us on, and uh, I'm gonna, I might start zigging and zagging soon, because I'm really hungry. And just because Saint Sulpice is not in our quarter today doesn't mean we can't enjoy the view from here. It's better nice. And uh, we're already at Rue de Four right there, so yeah, that didn't last long. Better than five feet though. I gotta try something new, but I also have to try something open. General rule of thumb. So what is that gonna be? Also, you'll see by the Rue de Fork sign, there's a paint splatter. It's another street artist. That, I don't know what the, it's like water balloons or like what it is, but they make these really colorful paint splatters and you'll see a lot of them in this neighborhood and around here. I kind of like those ones, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. All right, I didn't, oh, oh, I think I know, I know where we are. So, Rue de Sabo. As I recall, there's some interesting stuff down here, but it all looks closed on Rue de Sabo. There's a really nice, like, dumpling place down there, assuming they're still open. And the thing is, around the corner is already Central Mount des Prés. We've already come back around to that a little bit, but um, I'm just gonna walk the street to see what we find, because maybe there'll be something down here, but everything looks super closed. I thought, like, the right bank got closed on Sundays, but dang, this is something completely different. Definitely, uh, don't wander here hungry too often on Sundays. Ooh, a maki bar. I, oh, I've heard of this place, Blueberry. My sushi hunt continues. Yeah, so I've definitely been to the, oh, Blueberry, so I've been to their steam bar. Well, that's why I've heard of it. I've been to their steam bar, which is really good. I'll come back for their sushi someday. Get some delicious maki. This is kind of cool, though. Like, these fun little streets are awesome. Oh, Eggs & Co. I've heard of that place. I've never been. Let's try it. I feel like I know this place by reputation, though. Well, that was amazing. I'm stuffed. I got a like a traditional, well, a take on a traditional red wine sauce with onions and deliciousness on basically eggs benedict. It was like a good French American who knows what combo deliciousness. Oh my gosh. Who brunch? 29 euros. Definitely a brunch price, but worth it with orange juice and coffee and salad and potatoes and there's a pancake at the end and I, I missed that they actually did have maple syrup. I didn't see that. Whew, but I couldn't even finish it. Very good. Thanks, Franklin, if you ever see this. Franklin, owner of this place. They're uh, kind of struggling like everybody else, but uh, they're still putting out some really good stuff. So if you're ever in the neighborhood, I've known of them for a long time by reputation. Just never came over here for brunch and uh, what a godsend today. Also, I just want to say that the service was 
was top notch. They were so nice. Very friendly. Very, very, it was great. It was a really nice experience. Highly recommended. They're on Rue Bernard Palassi if you want to come. They're not far from uh, Saint Germain des Prés. Speaking of which, let's go see the old Abbey. Of course, in this neighborhood, we also have Café de Flore and Les Deux Magots. Places I think a lot of people love to go when they're here. Not spots that I personally would go for coffee necessarily, but definitely would go to sit and stare at that guy. This right here on Boulevard Saint-Germain is what remains of the old Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, which has a lot of history that I don't feel fully qualified to share in its entirety. But I do know that the Abbey used to be like a complete enclave. It was walled off and everything. And because of its status, uh, had like no taxes. So the city of Paris didn't tax it. So everybody who could wanted to live inside the walls of the Abbey just to keep from paying taxes. And for obvious reasons, that was not destined to last. So now there are no more walls and you can't live in there anymore. I don't think. Somebody lives in there. I'm guessing that they might work for the church. This church has one of the most beautiful ceilings in the entire city and you're about to get to see it. Especially because the last time I was in there, they uh, had scaffolding all over the place for construction. It's really good to see that finished. I love it in there. It's such a nice, like very old storied church. And good old Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. And it's good to get a little bit of that organ practice in. I wish we would have gotten more. Bad, uh, missed that. Too busy stuffing my face with eggs. Anyways, here we are, back on Rue Bonaparte. But I want to take a right first on Rue Labbé, which is named after the Abbey. Because there's a nice little square that I've been relatively ignorant to until recently, as some of you may know, but which is already pretty quiet and quaint on uh, any any given day, but on a Sunday like today, it's gotta be like dead silent. Also, there's a tiny little park here if you wanna have a picnic right by the Abbey. Yeah, also worth a visit. We are headed, of course, to Place Furstenburg, or Place de Furstenburg. I don't know how to say it in French. Place de Furstenberg. Place de Furstenberg is credited with being, or at least retaining, some of the quiet spirit of the former enclosure of the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. This, this is supposed to be the area that's still not too heavily touched by the luxury brands that have overtaken the neighborhood in general. It's pretty amazing. It's very quiet. It's a delightful little square. And it has the National Museum of Eugène Delacroix, who until recently was one of my favorite French painters. And I'm not gonna say that he's not still one of my favorite French painters, but I realized while I was in the Louvre all alone, 
which is a video if you want to go see, is available only to patrons, which thanks to my patron producer today, by the way, as well. I still haven't, I actually didn't have time to do the randomization again. So one last time, it's the newest patron, it's the newest patron of the week. Jason Moore, thank you so much for being my newest patron as of recording today. I really appreciate you being here, man. It means a lot. My patrons like Jason can actually see this video when I went into the Louvre all alone. Otherwise it's private and I can't show it publicly as requested by the Louvre itself. But uh, I found on that trip with Lerka and Elias that uh, Delacroix did not paint two paintings that I thought he had painted that I always credited him with in my brain that I thought were amazing paintings. I still think are amazing paintings. Uh, so he definitely took a hit on that front, but he's still amazing. Let's see if it's open. I've never gone into this place before. And if it is open, um, I actually would really, really like that. He has a studio. Supposedly he had a studio on this square with really big windows. And supposedly it's gonna be one of those experiences where when I see his studio and his apartment, I'm gonna want nothing else in my own life. I think we'll come back. I really wanna see this museum. It's free. I'm sure I'll come back at another point, but uh, I have a feeling that we already have seen enough for today. And there's so much more to explore. Why spend it all in one go? And since I can't just walk in, you know, that's part of it too. Like I gotta, you know, I was also looking for a birthday present for Richard for the last like week. I haven't been able to find one. And that was one of my goals for today was to try and find him something while we're out, but like everything is closed. So, um, if you see this, Richard, I'm still looking. I'll find you something. Finally, at our eastern border, Rue de Seine, which runs all the way pretty much to the Seine. Well, it runs into the back of the Academy Francaise, and that is out of bounds as well as the more famous section of Rue de Bussy, which is behind me, which is a famous walking district for food and drinks. And it's a really fun little street. Uh, also out of bounds. We'll get there. Don't worry. We'll get there. But Rue de Seine has a whole bunch more galleries, which are really nice. Some of them are really weird. It's very pleasant. It's a nice, nice little stroll. Highly recommended. There are two things we're going to do from here, though. To finish out, we're gonna hang a left to see two things. One is gonna be the Beaux-Arts, like the, the, what I always think of as the gate to enter into the Beaux-Arts, which I don't know if that's true or not, but that's how I feel about it, and uh, that's how I always think about it at least. And the place where Oscar Wilde died. That's pretty fancy. Look at this tiny little gallery. I've never noticed this before. It's so small. That's it, that's the whole thing. That's great. I don't know how I never saw that guy before. I'd call him the smallest gallery in Paris, but we all know that that's not necessarily true. It's pretty small though. So, okay, so I'm gonna zig, I think I, I wanna zig and zag one more time because I've never been down this street. Rue Visconti, I've ridden by it on my bike a million times, but I've absolutely never been here. Let's, let's just take a stroll. Travelers and curious people, that's me. I'm a traveler and I'm curious what's going on. Oh, it's a gallery. That's okay. Not that curious. So apparently this is a street full of galleries. It's kind of cool that they built just a little park here in between these buildings. I like it. Look at this. How quaint. Aren't you glad you walked down this street with me? I'm glad we walked down this street together. We still got that much farther to go. I don't know what this thing is. It looks very official. Oh, Logement Visconti. Oh, it's, I feel like I should be more quiet walking through here. There's a school. Okay. Oh, it's a creche. This is a daycare. I'm still looking for my Space Invader. I need another one today. Come on, I can't just get one. It's interesting too because I've never come at, I've never come at the, the street, I've ridden down the last portion of the street a million times on my bike. I've never come down from this, this angle before. It's just interesting to see how the gate changes the way it looks. So if you find yourself facing the Academy des Beaux-Arts from this angle, and you've got this double-headed gate in front of you, turn around like this. And right here, there's a hotel that I mean, I hope it's still open. It's got the ram's head on it, which I still don't know what that means. But that ram's head is your guide. It has these tall white walls and it looks very boarded up. I'm not gonna lie. 
This is crazy. Is it out of business? There was like a five-star hotel here for a long time. They're probably, are they just like on a pause? Okay then. Anyways, this is where Oscar Wilde died. If you're into the Irish poetry, uh, yeah. He was exiled here, for those of you that didn't know. And his tomb is in Pere Lachaise, which we may or may not go visit one of these days, not too far away, but uh, yeah. One of the famous stories, it's really windy right here, hold on. When he was in it, it wasn't a five-star hotel. It was, by reputation at least, a very seedy establishment. And uh, he wasn't happy with it, he didn't like it. And the story we used to tell on tour, which uh, I've never bothered to fully verify, but it was what I was told when getting taught how to take these tours. He was pretty grumpy at the end of his life, which he had plenty of reason to be. I mean, you get exiled from your home for really stupid reasons and you're bound to end up being not the happy old man in the end but supposedly he hated the wallpaper in particular so much in his room that he eventually told the proprietors listen either the wallpaper goes or I go and then like a few weeks later he died so you know he definitely uh, he made his last statement and now it's a five-star hotel that he never would have been able to afford to live in in life uh, had he had the opportunity the sad truths of, of being a poet, I guess, at the end of the day. Anyways, that's the end of that. If you want to come back and check out the Academy de Beaux-Arts, you're not going to be able to go inside, probably, unless you are a student. That's another one of those issues we ran into at the Sorbonne. However, one of these days, we'll go check out an exhibition at their exhibition center at the front, as well as go check out Delacroix's studio another day sometime in the future. There's so much to see in Paris. It'll, it, you could take lifetimes, dozens of lifetimes, just to see a third of it. And uh, we're going to try and do the best that we can over the next, I guess, 75, 74, 70 some videos hope you stick around for it hope you enjoyed today's video if you did be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for yet more madness as well as i will be sure to start trying to link to the playlist that all of these are going into if you want to replay them all and follow them all uh, without the interspersed vlogs that are going to come throughout as well they're going to be there for you anyways i better go before the storms hit again i'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning yeah until then keep making Beaux art street art whatever kind of art you want to make and uh yeah see you tomorrow